In the previous video, we talked about the first part of the statement, which is Blazor is a component-based single-page application framework. In this video, we are going to talk about the second part, which is it achieves interactivity with C Sharp. So then what is interactivity? Let's take an example. If we have a page and on this page, we have a list like this. Now we want to allow users to search list based on a filter and only produce the list that matches the filter. For that, we may have a search bar like this. So you're going to input something here and then you click on this button and you expect this list to change. In a traditional web application framework or in modern single page application framework like Angular, React, Vue.js, you have to implement this with JavaScript. So we click on this button, you code some JavaScript. You use JavaScript to call the backend data. Once you retrieve the data, then you will render this list with JavaScript again. So that's how you do it in other single page application framework. Whereas in Blazor, we are going to use C Sharp. So therefore you can see that we're gonna use C Sharp on the front end as well as on the back end. So that's one of the best parts of using Blazor. You no longer have to rely on JavaScript, although in some cases you still need JavaScript, but not as much as before. You're going to find yourself use C Sharp in more than 90% or maybe 95% of the cases. In terms of interactivity, Blazor implements interactivity with different options. And the first option is, ironically, no interactivity. So Blazor provides you a way to implement your application without any interactivity if your application does not actually require an interactivity like this. That's actually the base of all of the other interactivities. In the next video, we are going to talk about the project structure and you're going to see exactly what I mean here. So this is the base. And this is also called Blazor Static Server Side Rendering, right? Blazor SSR. So in most cases, you are going to create a Blazor project as Blazor SSR. That means without interactivity. And you will only need to add interactivity to this when you need interactivity. For example, in this case, we need interactivity here. And when you need to add interactivity to Blazor SSR, there are two different ways to add to it. The first way, it's called server interactivity. And the second way is called WebAssembly interactivity. We're going to borrow this diagram here. We're going to start with Blazor SSR, right? Which is the same as traditional web application where the user interacts with the browser, sends a request to the web application. And our Blazor web applications is going to render HTML back to the browser as HTTP response. Right, so this is Blazor's static server-side rendering, which is Blazor SSR. And if we find that we actually need interactivity in our components, maybe a different page component, then we have a choice to use server interactivity or WebAssembly interactivity, as I mentioned before. When we use server-side interactivity, how it works is that Blazor is going to help us to establish a SignalR channel which is a WebSocket channel. I'm using this silver bar to represent the channel that is established between the browser and the server, which is a like a peer-to-peer -peer communication. And that connection needs to be sustained in order for the communication to be working. And in order to help the browser to be able to talk to the backend applications through this WebSocket channel, there's a JavaScript file that is placed inside the page that is rendered in the browser. Right? This JavaScript file is not created by our developer. It's created by Microsoft. So we have this JavaScript file that helps us to communicate with the backend server. Whenever the user does something, enter something in an in input box or click on a checkbox or click on a button, that event will be handled by this JavaScript and send that request to the backend server. And the request is processed by the backend server. And it's going to see the uh, 
original HTML and the future HTML. It's going to compare them and only send the diff, right, the difference between those two back to the browser. And then the JavaScript file here is going to be responsible to render that difference inside the browser. That way, Blazor is only re-render the page partially. It's not re-render the whole page. And that is different from a traditional publication where the whole page is refreshed every single time. Right? So that's how server interactivity is achieved. And now let's talk about WebAssembly interactivity. Again, WebAssembly interactivity is based on Blazor SSR, right? This basic scenario. Now the components that require WebAssembly interactivity will be packaged together with done at runtime and all of the dependency they allows and a WebAssembly file, right? They will be packaged together and sent over to the browser because all of the modern browsers support executing WebAssembly. And actually executing WebAssembly is even faster than executing JavaScript because it's near native speed. So therefore, when we have even the .NET runtime downloaded to the browser, your C Sharp code will run within the browser supported by .NET runtime within WebAssembly. Right? That's the default scenario. There is another scenario where your component that needs to support WebAssembly interactivity will be compiled into WebAssembly and then it will be downloaded to the browser as WebAssembly, right? So there's no .NET runtime needs to be packaged anymore. Anyway, whether you use the first approach or the second approach, some kind of files will be downloaded from the server to the browser and eventually executed inside the browser as WebAssembly. And therefore you can see that we can use C-sharp inside the browser through WebAssembly. And actually there is a fourth scenario where you can mix and match between the server interactivity and WebAssembly interactivity, even on the same page. And when you look at the one screen on the browser, even on that, you can have one component that uses server interactivity, the other component is, uses WebAssembly interactivity. Right. Throughout this course, we're gonna talk a lot about server interactivity because it's just very easy to teach. And most of that, those concepts, most of the concepts will apply to WebAssembly as well. Now, later in this course, you will see sections about WebAssembly and what is the difference between server interactivity and WebAssembly interactivity. And you have chances to practice using WebAssembly interactivity as well. But for this video, you just need to remember that Blazor SSR, which is the base of everything. So you're going to create a project as a Blazor SSR normally. And then when interactivity is required, you have a choice to add either the server interactivity to the uh, Blazor SSR or the WebAssembly interactivity to Blazor SSR. Or you can add them both and use them together. And throughout the course, you will learn how to do that. So this is everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.